Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about secondary growth, in particular corkimium. Uh, so the plant has many meristems: shoot apical meristem, root apical meristem, axillary meristem, lateral meristem. Primary body of the plant and its constituent primary tissues include all the tissues that arise more or less directly from the activity of apical meristem and cell division in subapical region. On the other hand, lateral meristem, meristems termed termed cambia are those regions of dividing cells which are responsible for secondary growth and the formation of secondary tissues that will in turn form the secondary plant body the major lateral meristems are the vascular cambium and cork cambium the vascular cambium uh, cuts off secondary xylem and phloem which we are not going to talk about the only thing is secondary xylem is cut on the inside and secondary phloem is cut on the outside so what are we going to talk about we are going to talk about cork cambium which produces cork cells and also many other things so i tend to ask questions so uh, if i talk about cork cambium what is it how is it formed and what is its function let's talk about what is it it is also called phylogen and it is a lateral meristem that is responsible for production production of cork cells so how is it formed formed by de differentiation of the living completely mature cells what do i mean by the differentiation let's break the term in, into differentiation first let's talk about differentiation first if a group of cells is assigned a particular function i would call it mature cell and differentiated cells because they cannot they do not have meristematic activity so if i uh, talk about de differentiation that would simply mean regaining the meristematic activity so here on the left you see differentiated cell de differentiating into a cell uh, a group of cells that regain their meristematic activity and function as phylogen or cork cambium coming on to the function the function of a uh, phylogen or cork cambium is the production of protective phyloderm on the inside and production of phylum or cork cell on the outside with the help of periclinal division note the term periclinal look it up on web but the, it's just two types of division um, basically um, and the angle varies here it is periclinal and anticlinal i don't want to confuse you with it so i did not put it in the video yeah so phyloderm on the inside and uh, phylum or cork cells on the outside so the next image is a complex one and not to confuse you guys at all but coming on to the uh, lowermost uh, diagram on the left we have a section which shows secondary growth just notice just notice the dark blue colored um layer which is labeled as cork cambium this has cut cork on the outside and uh, on the inside it's not very pretty evident so let's come on to the explanatory part here what you see is a transverse section of the stem and on the outermost is the epidermis and i've just made vascular cambium for simplification there are lot uh, there are a lot of structures that are present but i have not shown them so the vascular cambium as we have already talked cuts xylem secondary xylem on the inside and secondary phloem on the outside and after the division after a lot of meristematic activity and after um a lot of divisions what you see is this it has secondary a layer of secondary phloem on the outside and maybe many layers of secondary xylem on the inside Uh, now, if we closely look into what happens uh, between secondary phloem and the epidermis, secondary cortical cells are present there, which, with the help of de differentiation, regain their meristematic activity and now function as cork cambium. Yeah, so the green new uh, layer is the cork cambium of phylogen, which develops outside the secondary phloem, 
and um, now if we look at the TS we have epidermis on the outermost side then cambium of phylogen then we have secondary cortex then we have secondary phloem vascular cambium and secondary xylem So uh, the dark green middle layer you see is the cork cambium which undergoes periclinal division and forms fellow derm on the inside which is which stays living and on the uh, right hand side you see or on the outer side I should rather say you see the cork cells of phelim. I have made them dark because they die at maturity and suberin deposition occurs and this makes them impervious to water and this is the reason the cork uh, floats in water the one which has which is on wine bottles yeah so um, after a particular time suberin deposition occurs and now if you see on your left you have new layers added dark green one is cork cells of phelim and in uh, on the inside uh, we have cork cambium and further inside we have fellow derm and secondary phloem also to secondary phloem then we'll have um, vascular cambium and then secondary xylem yeah um, the only thing to notice in this uh, diagram is suberin deposition I've um, made it evident with the help of dots yeah so uh, this should not be misleading because apart from suberin lignin cellulose hemicellulose and polyphenols also exist um, also occur in this part coming on to the next picture uh, this shows secondary growth and increase in girth as a result which means the epidermis gets ruptured due to the activity of vascular cambium vascular cambium keeps on cutting phloem outside and keeps on cutting xylem on the inside so because of this the outer structures get crushed and they get ruptured and what happens is the cork cambium the first layer of cork cambium which initially um, was formed from cortical cells by, by the process of de-differentiation uh, and it regained its meristematic activity now it will again differentiate into cork cells and a new layer of uh, cork cambium would be formed again with the again by cork, uh, the same cortical cells with the help of de-differentiation and with this the outer epiderm uh, the outer layer keeps on increasing and they keep getting ruptured and and several periderm layer keep on adding so when i say periderm this is nothing to be confused about periderm is nothing but cork cells cork cambium and phelloderm collectively are called periderm and people usually people usually use uh, periderm and bark but um, they are not synonymously used because periderm is as i told you cork cells cork cambium and phelloderm collectively and bark is anything that lies to um, the exterior of a vascular cambium that means secondary phloem periderm epidermis are together called bark as you can see in this picture ex everything that's lying exterior to vascular cambium secondary phloem, phelloderm, phelogen, phelim, epidermis is um, labeled as bark and periderm would be only phelloderm cork cambium of phelogen and cork cells of phelim so uh, we've largely covered a lot of things uh, not a lot of things actually a simple concept and so I just want to also talk about lenticels which um, forms beneath stomata or between stoma when the periderm the first periderm begins to form 
this forms because it has to perform the exchange of gases and water if we talk about the fully developed structure of a lenty cell it is somewhat loosely arranged thin walled and unsiberized cells with abundant intercellular spaces which is pretty evident in the right right side image yeah so yeah, we've come to yeah um so we finally we revise secondary cortex give rise to cambium which gives rise to phalloderm and phelim and these are collectively called periderm and i think um, this should make your concepts a little clearer um, and it should probably make you understand that in a better way <clears throat> so yeah that's all um i might have made mistakes do let me know in the comment section below what you uh, found not so well or something that could have been added in this video to make it a better one so suggestions are always welcome and last but not the least thank you so much for watching have a great day